Oh, I forgot to do that. Uh, good morning. Welcome to Grace uh, Middleway, Grace Episcopal Middleway. We're glad you're with us this morning. And uh, we'll start off with a few minutes of a choral interlude by uh, Mark Stevenson. We thank him for that. Anderson, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, Mark, I apologize. Again, uh, welcome to Grace Middleway and welcome to uh, the first Sunday in Lent. Uh, we're glad you're with us. And uh, uh, one announcement I will make uh, all, to all the Grace members. You should be uh, getting a notification this week sometime. I'll send it out. I'll get with uh, Lee and Bill uh, to set up our uh, annual congregation meeting via Zoom. So it should be interesting, but we'll get the the business of the church done that way. Also, starting Wednesday night uh, this week, uh, we'll start this week and go through Lent. Wednesday nights we'll gather again via Zoom. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the scripture for the day, and uh, we'll conduct uh, the evening prayer out of the Book of Common Prayer. For those not members uh, of Grace, if you would like to participate with us, uh, drop me a note, call me, whatever. I'll need your email address, and I'll send you an invite as well, uh, and you can join us on Zoom. Uh, of course, we'll also probably see some people from uh, St. Philip's gathering with us as well as we go through our Lent journey this year. Uh, and with that, we'll begin with the prelude. Thank you. 
Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. You can join me in the collect for purity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations and, as you know, the weakness of each of us. Let each one find you mighty to save through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first lesson is a reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you. And with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember this covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 25, and it's on your handout or on page 614 of the prayer book. We'll say together verses 1 through 9 and end with a refrain. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. My God, I put my trust in you. Let me not be humiliated, nor let my enemies triumph over me. Let none who look to you be put to shame. Let the treacherous be disappointed in their schemes. Show me your ways, O Lord, and teach me your paths. Lead me into your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. In you have I trusted all the day long. Remember, O Lord, your compassion and love, for they are from everlasting. Remember not the sins of my youth and my transgressions. Remember me according to your love and for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Gracious and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he teaches sinners in his way. He guides the humble in doing right and teaches his way to the Lord.
Good. Okay, I believe we are back, correct? Somebody give us a thumbs up for sound and video. How's that? Okay. Okey-doke. Well, I got a thumbs up from England saying that uh, I know at least she can hear us, but I do see the video is frozen. So if you want to uh, listen along with us, that would be great. The Holy Gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ according to Mark. Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. Okay, we're good still. <laughs> Audio's good, video is locked up. Okay. Again, welcome to the first Sunday in Lent. Uh, we're glad you're with us today. And even sticking with us through thick and thin as we go through these trials and tribulations of broadcasting over the internet. And I can tell you, uh, talking with all my colleagues throughout well, the Episcopal Church anyway, uh, we run through, uh, everybody runs through these issues, and so we just keep on going. We persevere and keep on driving. So again, welcome to the first Sunday in Lent. And today's texts all seem to have something in common, obviously, and we always like to try to find some common thread as to why we have these texts. And obviously today is uh, baptism and going through water and some type of wilderness experience. In Genesis this morning, Moses and his family and the animals have just come through their wilderness experience. Yes, they came through water too, but I'll tell you, it's, it's like a wilderness experience because they were holed up in the ark for at least, at least 150 days. Noah, his family, and some animals. Pretty tight quarters. I think some of us today can probably relate to being confined or at least semi-confined to a small space uh, for an extended period of time. And even if you are two people, say, living in a 3,000-square-foot house, it can still become small when you're there for a long time. And I'm sure many of us have found being holed up with the people we love for an extended time, no matter how much love there is between all of them, the lack of alone time can create tension. Not that I would know about that, but it may be happening out there. Alone time. Alone time is very important, and I'll hit on that a little bit later. Now, in our epistle today, we also hear about those in the time of Noah who were in prison. Now, what exactly does that mean that they were in, in prison? Well, there can be all kinds of speculation. But I will say this, apparently the people were going through a wilderness experience because they were separated from God until Christ comes to them. And then, of course, we have Jesus going through his wilderness experience after being baptized by John and seeing the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. Now, Mark starts off his gospel today, or his the telling today, by telling us where Jesus has come from. 
the little town of Nazareth in Galilee. Now, if I was introducing someone to you that I felt was really there to, they were going to shake things up or they were going to make things better, I was going to tell you a story about them. And the first thing I want to do is introduce that person to you. I would say something along the lines, or I might say, here is so-and-so from Buford, Wyoming. Now, if anybody's listening, that one person population from Buford, Wyoming, I apologize. But your response may be to that introduction, who and where in the world did they come from? Well, in this case, as I introduced this person, that is the smallest town in America. Population one. How would someone from there be able to make a difference in the world, you might think? They've not seen anything in the world. How would they be able to make a difference in anything? There is, they're just a nobody from a nowhere place. Meet Jesus of Nazareth. My golly, any respectable Jew would not even claim from being from the northern area of Galilee. I mean, that area is poor. It's nothing but peasants. They even have Gentiles living among them. And the whole place is surrounded by Hellenistic cities. What good could come out of Nazareth, as we heard Philip say? And I'll tell you, I can say this, but not to bust on our state, but for those of us who are natural-born West Virginians, you may have experienced this if you've been anywhere in this country or anywhere around the world. I know I experienced it many times, whether we were stationed out western part of the U.S. or overseas. You begin to make friends, and they say, hey, where do you come from? Where do you hail from? And I say, oh, we're all from West Virginia. Oh, what part of Virginia is that? No, not Virginia, West Virginia. And then there's that response that we always heard. Oh. Oh, because of all the stereotypical West Virginia stories out there. So that's how it was for Jesus. He's from where? Oh. But. So here's this guy, Jesus, from Nowheresville. And now he's being baptized by John. But then you might say to yourself, and I've heard the question before, isn't, wasn't Jesus sinless? Why would he need to be baptized? But repent, when John's talking about repent and be baptized, the repent can mean different things. Yes, for us sinners to turn from our sinful ways to follow Christ, and we still sin, we continue to return to Christ. When we were baptized, it symbolized our washing clean of sin, that we repent of our sins and we turn back to Christ. But for Jesus, I, I think that this may have been of what was to come with the testing he was going to receive in the wilderness. According to our text, we're going to hear later what is offered to him, the whole world. So you can actually maybe repent by turning away from the world. Jesus was going to be offered the world. All the kingdoms could be his. You remember this and just heard this. But he had already turned from that. He had turned from any worldly ways and is turning again as he is has turned from putting God to the test. And we think back to Christ's baptism, and we hear that the heavens were opened up. It's kind of a foreshadow of the tearing of the temple curtain, but also when we hear that the heaven is opened up like that, we hear of the Spirit of God descending upon Jesus in this case. And when the heavens are opened up, the Spirit and the power of God come down to earth. When the heavens are opened up, that power of God come down, comes down and makes anything possible. In Mark 7, and we'll hear this in a few weeks, we hear of Jesus healing the deaf man. Then looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephatha, that is, be opened. And I think not only is Jesus saying to the man's ears to be opened, but the fact that he looks up to heaven and is asking also for the heavens to be opened up to allow the power of God to come down. Also in Jesus' baptism at the end, we hear God calling or saying to Jesus that he is, that he is his son. And at that moment, the Spirit drove Jesus to the wilderness. And it's in that 
wilderness experience, I think, that Jesus really experiences God. It's just Jesus out there. Of course, being waited on by the angels, and we hear about the, the wild animals. But I believe it's in this time that Jesus truly understands what his call is. It's in that wilderness experience where it's just Jesus and God. And that's when Satan comes to test him. Now Lent, Lent is our time that we've set aside as our time for our wilderness experience. It's a time to fast, a time to self-reflect, to get a clear mind and really contemplate our lives in Christ, our living out the way of the Lord, our time for deep prayer. And when I say deep prayer, I'm talking about finding that place alone. And this is what I was talking about earlier, trying to find a place alone in this pandemic as we're confined kind of to our houses. But to find a place by yourself, a quiet place. And we hear this many times in scriptures. And just today I found, I was looking again, and there were 10 of them that popped up. A lot in the Psalms where we hear things like, be still before the Lord. We hear it in Ecclesiastes, a time to be silent. We hear it in Job, we hear it in Exodus, and we hear it in James. Be still. We've got to find that a place where we can listen. And I'm not talking for just two, three, four, five minutes. I mean, I mean a quiet place and listen to God. Have a prayer time when you just listen to God. Push all other things out of your mind. Focus on God. Yes, there are times for prayers when we talk, of course, supplications, intercessions, and things like that. But in our Lenten journey this year, I want us to try and take some time to find that quiet place, wherever it may be. It could be in a barn. It could be outside somewhere. A quiet place where you can get some time, more than just five minutes, and still yourself. Still yourself and just listen We're, so that we can experience God. In, in fact, in chapter 42 of Job, he says, I heard of you by the hearing of my ear. How many of us go through our lives, our faithful lives, just on the hearing of God, hearing about God? And Job goes on to say, But now my eye sees you, therefore I despise myself and repent in dust and ashes. We didn't get to have our ashes, uh, but still, Job is saying the same thing. You've got to be quiet and listen and experience God. Now, brothers and sisters, this, this year we may have not received our ashes but as my, my good friend and colleague, Father John Valentine, preached this Wednesday, he said, we're giving up ashes for Ash Wednesday. Or if you want, you could call it Ashless Wednesday. But we can still repent. We can still examine ourselves. We can enter our wilderness, a place of quiet, and we can listen for God. And we can experience God in that time. And as Noah and his family, the animals, and those who didn't listen to Noah in his time, and even Jesus came through their baptism of water and a wilderness experience, they came out on the other side knowing the power of God. And their lives were changed. We need to emulate our Lord and Savior. And we need to enter that time of wilderness. We need to enter that time and still ourselves and listen to to God and come out on the other side of our Lenten journey, our wilderness time, as one who has experienced God and ready, ready to bring the kingdom of God near to all we encounter. Amen. Well, if everything is still working, and I got a thumbs up, if you will, <coughs> on your screen, or if you have your prayer book, uh, let us recite the Nicene Creed together. Please stand if you are.
Abel. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The prayers of the people you'll find on your screen. And if anyone would like to add someone to our prayer list, feel free to type it in the comments, and uh, I will be glad to add them. In peace we pray to you, Lord God, for all people in their daily life and work, for this community, the nation, and the world, for the just and proper use of your creation. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For the peace and unity of the church of God. For our presiding bishop Michael and our bishop Michi. And for all bishops and other ministers. For the special needs and concerns of this congregation, remembering those on our prayer request list, Mag, Kaylee Rose, Lynn, Mary Ellen, Stanley, Haley, Leslie, Nancy, Mary, Sandy, Mark, Carolyn, Bianca, Linda, Raymond, Ann and Warren, Eamon, Philip, Bill, Mark, Terry, Nancy and family, Carrie Beth, Lonnie, Barbara, Brady, Diana, Lorraine, Bruce, Wendell, Elizabeth, Ralph, Crystal, Honey, Kim, Jimmy, Dennis, Carolyn, Robert and Margaret, Pippa, Jim, and the Reverend Canon Mark Seitz. Victims of natural disasters, our service members at home and abroad, and Christians around the world. And in our diocesan cycle prayer of prayer, Sandcrest Conference and Retreat Center, and Cheryl Harshman, the director. And in our companion diocese in Colombia, the Reverend Javier Aldana, Mission Rural El Rosal del Santa Marta. Hear us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King. We pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them. We pray also for the forgiveness of our sins.
Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you all. We'll take a few minutes. Go ahead and talk amongst yourself. Wish each other the peace as I set up for spiritual communion. We're doing Eucharistic Prayer A found on your screen, or if you're in your Book of Common Prayer, that'll be on page 361. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You bid your faithful people cleanse their hearts and prepare with joy for the Paschal Feast, that, fervent in prayer and in works of mercy, and renewed by your word and sacraments, they may come to the fullness of grace which you have prepared for those who love you. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, You, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people, the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in Him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, in, by him and in him and with him, 
in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as I say, for your Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Receive in your heart and in your soul the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ and keep you into everlasting life. And if you'll repeat the prayer on the screen. In union, O Lord, with your faithful people at every altar of your church where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, I desire to offer to you praise and thanksgiving. I remember your death, Lord Christ. I proclaim your resurrection. I await your coming in glory. And since I cannot receive you today in the sacrament of your body and blood, I beseech you to come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. The prayer on page 365 in the Book of Common Prayer. And on your screen. Eternal God, Eternal Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the blessings of God Almighty, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit be with you all and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks be to God.